is Trinidad and Tobago Red Force after their crushing innings victory over the Leeward Islands Hurricanes in the fifth round of the WICB Professional Cricket League this past weekend. Craig Bathwit will skipper the team, which includes speedster Tino Best, Carlos Bathwit, Shamar Brooks, Rustin Chase, Kyle Corbin, Miguel Cummins, Shane Dorich, Kurt Edwards, Shea Hope, Ashley Nurse, Kevin Stout, and Jamel Warrican. That sixth round encounter bowls off on Friday at Kensington Oval. Now, meanwhile, Guyana continued to lead the standings after round five with a victory over Jamaica by 105 runs. Scores there, Guyana 314 and 202, Jamaica 177 and 234. And the windwards of Volcanoes enjoyed an innings victory over Trinidad and Tobago in St. Lucia. Scores there, the windwards 400 for eight, uh, declared and TNT 177 and 75. Well, Red House successfully defended their inter-house athletic title when the Frederick Smith Secondary School held their track and field championships at the National Stadium today. Red repeated as champs, amassing 915 points. Far behind was Green on 686, followed by Yellow with 674 and Blue 558 points. Anne-Marie Burke was there for the 200 meters. The Sox had it. Those were the fashion statements off track when the Frederick Smith Secondary held their sports day at the National Stadium. The 200 meter events were definitely competitive. And in the under 13 girls event, all I was seeing was red. Led by Danielle Brathwaite, with teammates Sofiane Ramsey and Quenzel Springer completing the sweep. The under 13 boys, and even at the 80 meter mark, there was no telling the winner. But then Sachin Griffith of Blue punched a gear to surge ahead of Green's Ronil Webb, with Yellow's Elon Davis in for third. All systems are go for the under 13 girls, and they looked in good form. A two woman battle between Sharice Francis and Shaquana Hunt. Hunt seemed destined to be the victor, but Francis dug deep to pass Hunt just in the nick of time to get home first. The boys on the 15 provided just as much excitement. Off the turn, the battle began. But check the arms pumping, the legs moving. That's Jaden Jordan of Red House. Actually, Red would also be second and third with Donovan Branch and Tyrese King Rollock. And this support was really having a ball for her house. You had to ask, what was it with the Red House athletes? They are just too hot to handle. Like Shante Cole, who smashed the field in the under-17 girls race. Tatiana Carmichael, she was looking good too. By now, I could almost say Red House would be a runaway champion. A little change in nomination will come in the boys on the 17 race, where it will be Blue House, as teammate Shaquem Clark and Redon Pilgrim, who came storming back, took the top two positions. Green's Shaquan Boyce was third. The under-20 girls were not as quick. This is the final 80 meters of their race, where yellow Shamira Ali just took the lead. Red Shanice Gibbons, she was trying, but she ended in second, and in third was Akela Cave. And the under 20 boys saw Rico Hurley out like a bullet from early. Ronaldo contribute, he was hot on his heels, but he would catch him. In third was Jabari Yearwood. It was like a party atmosphere as the St. James, well, the Frederick Smith School. They came to town. Amory Burke, CBC Sports. Well, all systems are goal for this year's National Primary Schools Athletics Championships. Set to get going with the first zonal meet on February 23rd. Now, Pine Hill Dairy are once again titled sponsors for the event in its 14th year. The CBC's Anne-Marie Burke was at this morning's official launch at the Pine Hill Dairy. With the signatures of Henry Yearwood, category manager at Banks Holdings Limited and chairman of Knapsack Wayne Robinson on the dotted lines, Pine Hill Dairy has agreed to the title sponsorship of the annual National Primary Schools Athletic Championships for another three years. At this morning's launch, a number of other sponsors were also in attendance. With 83 primary schools set to participate, there has been some restructuring at the zonal level. The Obadali Thompson Zone will now have 18 schools. That is because of the inclusion of Warren's Primary and the reintroduction of the Rock Christian School. In addition to that, the Andrea Blackett Zone will now have 15 schools because of the closure of the society school. All the other three zones will remain at the same 16 schools. 
this year's championships will also create history from a technological standpoint. The new Lynx timing system will be utilized, a first for any track and field event in the Caribbean. It is quite similar to what you will see at the Olympics. The start uses a strobe light and a gun replication song. Okay, we also have the facility within that to use a tone to start the under sevens, which we are we've put out the teachers we may use that because sometimes when they hear the gun, some of them tend to jump before they run, which obviously hinders them in the race. It is directly linked into our electronic time system. So from the time the trigger is pulled, we get the start time. So it's actually extremely accurate in terms of times at the end of the day and that is very important for advancement procedures. My crew will be in the dynamic crew that they are, we've made some improvements to it and we've been able to now run it through the stadium's PA system. So for the first time at the stadium, the starter's orders will also be coming through the PA system at the stadium. So you will get that fully integrated experience. The championship will also be streamed live on the Napsat webpage, as well as an expansion this year to the Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook social media platforms. Napsat championships will run from February 23rd to March 2nd with the zonal meets. The quarterfinals will be on March 11th with the semis on the 17th. And the big finals day is set for March 25th. Anne-Marie Burke, CBC Sports. Well, thanks again, Anne-Marie. Now, tickets for all the Napsat competition days are expected to go on sale next week at box offices across the island. Thierry Gill was named Player of the Year when the Pro Shotters Youth Football Club held its awards ceremony at the Banks Brewery Ground in Wildey over the weekend. The Most Outstanding Goalkeeper Award went to Justin Griffith, while eight-year-old Jalen Johnson was named the Most Outstanding Junior. Tariq Bell was named the Most Dedicated Player, with Rivaldo Massa as the Most Dedicated Junior. The Most Improved Player was Asher Jean-Pierre, and Akeem James, the most disciplined a player. Uh, head coach Greg Castani told CBC Sports that the club was one of the most successful in local juniors tournaments, winning three national titles. He revealed some of the plans for this year. There are three things that we're looking at for this year. Um, we're in touch with um, Brad Friedel at Tottenham Hotspur and uh, we've nominated four players and he's looking into having arrangements where they kind of come up to, to Tottenham some maybe sometime during the summer. Um, fortunately, one of them has a UK pass, but that is helpful. So uh, ages 8, 11, 12, and 13, that shows you what ages they're looking at. Um, we're trying to arrange a tour to the UK, the Warrior Cup, Keel Warrior Cup. That's most probably going to have to be next year because of the fundraising is so difficult at this time. So that's on for next year. And we're planning a, a short tour to Trinidad for like 10 days to play against leading teams there, under 13, under 15, and under 11 age groups. Well, that's it for our sports package this evening. Coming up next, the Business Report. Pelican Village will come alive every Saturday in February as it celebrates Black History Month.